I now recognize myself for five minutes of questions. Mr. Egan, you just heard uh, Mr. Delansky say that uh, if this rule goes into effect, there's still going to be a wide variety of gas stoves available for consumers. Do you agree with that statement? No, like he even said, they're going to wipe out 50% of the market. 50% of the market will not comply with DOE's proposed rule. That is a substantial amount of gas cooktops. Of the higher end cooktops, professional grade cook cook cooking products, <clears throat> in about 96% will be wiped out. So a large chunk of the desirable products with the features that people are looking for will, will be wiped out, and that will all go all the way down into the mid-range to low-range product as well. But Mr. Egan, they said there's, this is not a ban. My colleague said it wasn't a ban. We have a witness that says it wasn't a ban. So isn't it, is it not a ban? Basically, it's going to amount to just having fewer, a lot fewer choices, and it really be an effect, effectively be a ban in the sense that you, uh -huh. you so will not. So a de facto you, ban. You, will, you, you basically will okay. have direct way of banning gas. So over-regulating and regulating to such a degree that it is, in effect, pretty much a ban, except for the 4% that already comply. Right. So it's, the 96%, you're kind of out of right. luck. You, you will get the choice that you probably don't want at the store, basically. A choice for consumers. Right. Choice, interesting, okay. Can you explain the versatility and performance of gas stoves compared to electric stoves? Because I love, I love gas stoves. In fact, we, I was just talking to counsel, he's looking for a house, he wouldn't even buy a house unless it had a gas stove. And I, can, I tend to agree, and if, if I go to a place like a VRBO and they have a gas stove, I get excited. Right. It's just me, anecdotal, but you go ahead. No, no, so gas stoves obviously are very versatile and have features that, that people want. The, the important thing is obviously people like having the immediate control over the flame, being able to be able to control the, the cooking temperature, being able to react quickly, temperatures can go up and down, and then also cooking a variety of products. If you're, if you're looking to cook on a high heat or sear, you can do meat or vegetables in that way, looking to boil a large amount of pasta or, or any kind of rice. It, it, it basically makes it more efficient to do your do cooking, and also these cooking products are actually not just used for re residential purposes. If you're a small business working in your home, it provides that level of versatility that allows you to work in your home business and, and get things done in that fashion. So let's talk about like states that are calling for gas stove bans. New York comes to mind. Uh, celebrity chefs are suing. They like their gas stoves. They're they're the experts with the the, the culinary deliciousness that we as Americans like so much. Uh, they get exception. They get exceptions. Exceptions for their businesses. Courts are even ruling in their favor. This is just outrageous logic. Why are celebrities getting favored treatment over everyday Americans? Yes, obviously we would want direct use for access to natural gas in people's homes and the stoves of people's homes. It's clear that they're making these exceptions because it will economically affect towns and businesses that are looking to ban natural gas. They don't want to see those restaurants leave. And you're starting to see that in certain areas where, where restaurants are starting to push back. And that's why really the, t the uh, California Restaurant Association sued Berkeley to kind of make sure that they get the restaurant could still have access to natural gas in Berkeley, California. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lieberman, your organization has participated in the Department of Energy rulemaking over the last 20 years regarding energy and water conservation standards for home appliances such as gas stoves. How does the efficiency standard in the proposed rule violate the Energy Policy and Conservation Act? Well, the, 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 law is the law is very clear that energy efficiency standards can't compromise product quality, choice, and features. And that clearly is at issue here. Gas stoves are much more, di much disproportionately burdened under this. Gas stoves will survive, but they'll have to cut corners in order to comply. They'll have to uh, cut back on the very highest heat burners, as we've heard. And these are features that people want. They're on the market because people want. Essentially, the, the, the statute says if a feature is on the market before uh, a standard. It has to remain on the market in at least one model after the standard. That's not going to be the case here. And regarding a ban, remember Department of Energy and Consumer Product Safety Commission both targeting gas stoves. The idea that two agencies going after uh, stoves and we have nothing to worry about is just not realistic. You add to that natural gas hookup bans, which are now getting support from the federal government through the Inflation Reduction Act, $840 uh, of, of taxpayer money for the purchase of uh, a, a, an electric stove, zero for a gas stove, uh, a whole host of measures uh, 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 opposed to uh, natural gas more broadly, you know, uh, limited leasing on federal lands. It all adds up to a whole lot fewer gas stoves in the future if, if all this is allowed to, uh, to, to, to be finalized. And $840 
for an electric stove. I don't know how it works because some don't even cost $840. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe you get the stove and some money on yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, we'll pay okay. you to take the stove. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all. Well, thank you, witnesses.